On July 26, there was a historic congressional hearing on UFOs. Three so-called witnesses, two of them actually never saw a UFO, testified to congressional leaders about UFOs and aliens. We previously released a breakdown of red flags, inaccuracies, and outstanding questions from this hearing. A link to this video is in the description below. The star witness of the hearing was David Grush, who claims alien UFOs have crashed on Earth, and the government is in possession of both the alien craft and the alien bodies. In this video, we'll discuss the dubious characters connected to Grush and how they played a role in pushing UFOs all the way to Congress. Another red flag even before the hearing started, Mick, was uh, the presence and involvement of George Knapp and Ooh, Jeremy yes. Corbell, who sat front and center at the hearing, walked into the hearing like rock stars. Uh, you know, in my our reporting at the Post, we've, you know, gone into a lot of the claims of George Knapp, you know, who is deeply, deeply, deeply invested in Skinwalker Ranch and the stories of Bigfoot and the stories of God knows what, with no evidence ever presented, who admits there's no evidence. There is there cameras. any evidence? So, well, but no, not, not really. But despite that, writes books about it, claiming it's true. Um, and these two folks, you've got Jeremy Corbell, a former yoga instructor turned apparently military expert, <laughs> who's an expert on all of this all of a sudden. Um, and, w you know, we learned that they met Grush, you know, a uh, long time ago. Dave Grush approached us first. At it like a Star Trek convention or something. We we actually we actually did meet at a Star Trek convention. Uh, he came to the event. He heard our presentation. Yeah. We spent some time together to talk about topics of mutual interest. And then they met up at a UFO conference. And there's a photo of Grush sitting at a table with George Knapp, with Jay Stratton, with Travis Taylor. Those three deeply involved with Skinwalker Ranch, deeply involved with dubious claims of just the craziest stuff ever, have never presented any evidence. Um, they're sitting right behind Grush, and then Burchette thanks them. I want to thank everybody for making this happen today. I know I saw it in the crowd there, George Knapp, my buddy Jeremy Corbell. What were your thoughts on that whole... That that's ridiculous. That was ridiculous. Uh, and that was a big red flag. And as soon as I saw like the, the witnesses lined up, uh, you you had uh, Graves, uh, Grush and Fravor. And right behind on either side of, of Grush, very, very visible were George Knapp and Jeremy Corbell, who, as you know, have this very dubious history of, uh, of, of inaccurate reporting of UFOs. Uh, and a, a great example of that was this recent uh, case from 29 Palms, uh, which was a video that was released by Jeremy Corbell and, and George Knapp. They said that there was this giant triangular craft, the size of a football field, that was hovering over this camp uh, for, for a long period of time. That went everywhere. That story went everywhere, all over the news as this triangle UFO, this spooky ship, this craft. For weeks. Mystery in the sky. Do you see the five dots there on your screen? Looks like a triangle seeming to hover over a base out at 29 Palms. A triangular formation of light. Could this really be a mass UFO sighting? Joining us now is Jeremy Corbell. And Jeremy Corbell himself joins us right now. It's Jeremy Corbell, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Uh, and then it was almost immediately proven to be flares, what it actually was was what a lot of people pointed out within minutes of the, the video being released was flares. A uh, very common uh, source of UFO sightings are military flares because they often drop them in, in, in patterns. and They're quite large in the sky, they're spacing, and they, they descend fairly slowly and st stay there for a while. So we proved like 100% exactly what these were, these, these flares. It really wasn't that hard to figure it out. You know, Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp, they, they were the people responsible for leaking the green triangle video uh and they, call, they called that... it yeah and good nap corbell they're report they're, they're reporting it was flying pyramids yeah they were, they said these these green triangles were actually triangular shaped and they were actually like a, a bunch of things la-based investigative delays, filmmaker jeremy corbell this... recently released this video taken by the navy showing what he describes as pyramid shaped ufos ufos are real they represent an advanced and sophisticated technology and then you, of course, proved without a doubt 
that the triangle shapes we see are actually due to the triangular shape of the camera's aperture. Basically, with a triangular aperture, anything that's out of focus would look like a triangle. You also proved, without a doubt, that most of the objects in the videos and photos were actually just stars, out of focus stars. But despite all of this, Corbell still claims, still claims, these were triangles, pyramids. You know, he he tweeted like when I explained what it was. It's you know the aperture of the the triangular aperture of the camera. I explained what it was, and he basically he tweeted saying basically it's complete nonsense. It's a lie. It's a disinformation. The triangular aperture theory is just a big distraction from the reality of things. When in fact it was all hundred percent accurate. That's what actually happened, and as was confirmed by the Pentagon. The triangular appearance is a result of light passing through the night vision goggles and then being recorded by an SLR camera. It is simply that that light source uh, resolves itself through the, um, uh, through the night vision goggles onto the SLR camera as a triangle. But even that, that's an interesting thing. The Pentagon confirmed you know, the theory that I and various other people came up with because it was so obvious. But the Pentagon said they didn't figure it out for two years. And what's going on there? Uh, who was actually looking into it? Oh, it's the UAP task force at that time which would have been Jay Stratton and Travis Taylor. They couldn't figure it out for two years, this simple little optical thing, Travis Taylor. PhD in optics, couldn't figure it out. What's going on? These are ancient aliens stars. These are, you know, authors of books about ghosts and, and werewolves. These are people who have been hawking the UFO and ghost and paranormal story for decades who make a living off of this their life depends on everything being spooky and they're not only in attendance but we hear from congressional leaders they're part of the process they're influencing yeah. the leaders they're submitting statements they're george knapp my buddy jeremy corbell um i uh, they're not witnesses but they've uh, provided some statements on this subject and i seek unanimous consent to enter those statements into the record mr chairman without objection which is just baffling to me because Jeremy Corbell has done nothing other than promote a narrative and release a whole bunch of really terrible UFO videos that get almost immediately debunked. Uh, he's a very good talker. He, he's, he's quite compelling if you, you know, don't know the facts behind the case, but somehow he's managed to have this influence over people in Congress. After the UFO hearing ended, News Nation reported that Congressman Burchette originally had more than just three witnesses lined up to testify. On August 6th, Jeremy Corbell claimed that there were five congressional UFO witnesses and that all five were in attendance at the hearing. So who, according to Corbell, were the other two congressional witnesses? George Knapp and himself.